Hey everybody, today we'll be going over atomic theories. Specifically, to begin with, we will review Dalton's atomic theory and how this theory transformed over time. Let's get going. Dalton's atomic theory. Essentially, this is explained through five key principles or postulates, which explain that all matter is composed of atoms, which are neither created or destroyed in chemical reactions, and that the atoms of each element are the same but different from other elements. To begin with, the first principle. All matter is composed of very small particles called atoms. These atoms are the smallest unit of an element that can participate in chemical change. As you can see on the left is a picture of Dalton's atomic model. The next principle states that elements consist of only one type of atom. So all atoms of an element have the same chemical and physical properties and a mass that is characteristic of the element. As you can see in the image below, there are dozens of copper atoms that can be found within a penny. And, these, and this penny only has these one type of copper atoms. The third principle states that the physical and chemical properties of one atom of an element differ from the physical and chemical properties of all other atoms and other elements. Essentially, the physical and chemical properties of, of atoms that make up hydrogen are different from the physical and chemical properties that make up carbon. Next, the fourth principle. Compounds consist of two or more elements. They are combined in a very small whole number ratio, and specific compounds will always have the same ratio. As you can see in the image below, you can see how copper and oxygen atoms are combined in a one-to-one -one ratio to create this compound. Finally, the fifth principle. Atoms are not created or destroyed in a chemical change, and atoms are rather rearranged to yield substances that are different from the ones present before the change. So this is a really important concept for you to understand that atoms are not created or they destroyed. Instead, they are rearranged to yield substances that are different from the ones present before. After Dalton's atomic theory, there were more scientists who performed experiments that resulted in more detail and information regarding the atom. One of those scientists was J.J. Thompson. He used the cathode ray tube to demonstrate that atoms contain electrons. What a cathode ray is, is a sealed glass tube containing two metal electrodes. And he applied a high voltage across these two electrodes. And at one end of the tube caused the particles to flow from the cathode to the anode. So that's a lot of terminology. So what is a cathode? A cathode is a particle positively charged electrode, and the anode is a negatively charged electrode. And where he saw the voltage and everything flowing, he realized that atoms contain electrons which are negatively charged. Robert A. Millikan did an oil drop experiment, which also similarly determined the charge of the particles. And what Robert A. Millikan did was that he used oil droplets, droplets, microscopic oil droplets with friction or x-rays to make it charged between two metal electrodes. And he used gravity to cause the droplets to fall, but he used an electric field which could slow or reverse the falling of these droplets. And with this experiment, he determined the charge of each individual oil drop by adjusting the electric field. Ernest Rutherford, on the other hand, used a gold foil experiment to determine that most of the atom contains a large amount of empty space, but there is a heavy, positively charged nucleus at the center. What he did was he shot a beam of alpha particles to a gold foil, and most of them passed through just fine, but some of them bounced back and from that, he realized that these particles were positively charged. Frederick Soddy, on the other hand, discovered that an, ele an element could have types of atoms with different masses that were chemically indistinguishable. So what does that mean? Chemically indistinguishable means that both the elements were the same identity. So an oxygen that has a mass of 16 has the same identity as an oxygen that has a mass of 17. They're still the same element, but 
they had different masses. And this is what an isotope is. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that differ in mass. And this led Saudi to be awarded the Nobel Prize in 1921. Lastly, James Chadwick discovered neutrons, and neutrons are uncharged subatomic particles with a mass similar to protons. And Chadwick's discovery helped explain isotopes, as the difference in mass was caused by the different number of neutrons. And again, they're chemically similar because they have the same number of protons. And this explains all the atomic theories and details about the atom. And that's it for the atomic theories video, and I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.